Dustin, Embry, James McCurdy, Martin, hello Brother Martin, Evan Doyle, hello, how are y'all, glory to God, well, praise God, hallelujah,
Hallelujah. I trust everyone's doing well today. Praise God. Today is June the 16th, 2019. Uh, it's 9.03 in the morning here. We'll wait another minute or so. Uh, to all the fathers out there, praise God. Happy Father's Day. Amen. And uh, isn't it interesting? Well, let me not get started here. We'll go before the Lord with prayer in a minute. Praise God. You know, I want to encourage you guys, if you have any questions for me, if you have anything that you want to inject, amen, into the broadcast, please publish and uh, ask the questions down there, make a comment, you know, praise God, we're here to, to break bread and to fellowship one another, amen, to, to break the, you know, to fellowship the life of God, amen, the scripture says, in John 1, 4, in him was life, and the life was the light, that life gives us light, amen, comprehension. Not just to you, but to one another, amen? We give it to one another. It's called fellowship, koinia. So again, if anyone has any questions, please ask, you know, and uh, I'll do my best to answer the question. Uh, it's 9.04 now. Let's go ahead and start with some prayer. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to so stand in your presence, Father God, to minister the words of life to the body of Christ, amen. I thank you, Lord God, that every joint supplies, amen. I thank you, Lord God, the body of Christ, Father God, the life of God that they have, Father, they are able to impart that life, even as I'm able to impart your life to them. I thank you, Lord God, in Jesus' name for this opportunity, Father God. I thank you, Lord God, that your words are life unto those who find them and help to all their flesh, Father. I thank you, Lord God, in Jesus' name, that you are not a man that you should lie, neither the son of man that you should repent. For have you said, and shall you not do it, and have you spoken it, and shall you not make it good? And I thank you, Lord God, in Jesus' name, Father God, that you do not go back on your word, Father. And as a matter of fact, your word declares that you uphold your word above your name. Your word is integrity, your word is life, amen. We live on those words, amen. It's called the bread of life, in Jesus' name. We live after that word, Father God, and I bless you right now. I thank you, Father, for your faithfulness, Father God. I thank you, Lord God, in Jesus' name, that you watch over the Word in every one of our lives to perform it. And I thank you, and I invite your Holy Spirit into my life, into this broadcast, Father God, and for the people here, that they would have ears to hear and eyes to see what the Spirit is saying to the church in this hour. I thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, praise God. I, I trust everyone's having a, a good week, and I, I trust everyone's going to be able to be a part of their family today. And, and uh and be a father amen but again it's not just today right it's every day of our lives praise god and uh i wanted to start off with something today that's you know just keeps gnawing at me if you will in the spirit if you will the scripture says right in first Corinthians chapter two that the natural man receives not the things of the spirit of god uh let me read it real quick first Corinthians chapter two Verse 14, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, and neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned, right? And so, if we look on above, talking about the spiritual man, right? If we look on verse uh, 9, 1 Corinthians 2, 9, but as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, neither has entered into the heart the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man, here it is, knoweth the things of a man, say the Spirit of a man that is within him. Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Now, we have not received the spirit of the world, the cosmos, that's the word there. Cosmos is the world system, the orderly arranged system. And the scripture says the God of this world is Satan. All right. We have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. So as he says in the, in the verse 9, but as it is written, I had not seen nor ear heard, neither has entered into the heart of man the things which God prepared for them that love him. But it says here in verse uh, 12, Now we have received, not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. So in other words, we can know the things of God by the spirit of God that's within us. He's the one that's revealing. He's the one that's breathing light into that word, onto that word, breath, right? 
and that life, that word becomes alive in your spirit, man. Then as you begin to bring it out through your soul, right? As you speak that word, you bring, you're bringing forth the rainbow. You're bringing forth the word of life. You're bringing forth light, okay? So as again, uh, I was, uh, you know, looking, well, I was reading something, right? And the brother makes a reference to, you know, another carnal reference. In other words, another reference from the world, right? First of all, we need to understand something about our walk in the Lord and the kingdom of God, right? Now, if you don't know, right, the things of God, if you don't know the word of God, then there's grace, amen? And that's not to say that there's not grace even after you know, but when you see the spirit of error that's leading you and guiding you in a direction, again, the carnal man, that's not of God, well, then you turn and you repent. That's the mark of maturity as a son of God or a daughter of God. You, When the word of God comes, you it corrects you and you make the adjustment and you turn back to the Lord. That's called metanoia, godly sorrow, godly repentance. And that's the goal of that. That's why God has us in each and other, one and one, each and that's why God has us in each other's lives so that when we can speak the word of the Lord to one another, when we see that there's a brother or sister inside a line from the spirit, in other words, spirit, soul, and body, you must be spirit, soul, and body. You, you have to be submitted to your spirit, man, because that's what the life of God is. So again, it's important that we fellowship and communicate and distribute the word of God to one another, the life of God to one another, amen. And when I'm amongst the body of Christ, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the life of God. I'm not looking for how's the weather. Did you catch the game last night? Did you see the Golden State Warriors? They won. And it doesn't mean that I don't watch these things or do sports. But what I'm saying is I'm looking for the life of God. Okay? Now, the carnal man, the scripture says, but, he that is, but the natural man, verse 14, receives not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they're spiritually discerned. You can't understand these things because you're walking after the flesh. You don't understand why it's important for you to be sanctified unto the Lord. You know, I was explaining to my sons last night that, that sanctification means that when I sanctify my life, that means that I'm ready at any given moment to move in behalf of the Lord for whatever the situation is, right? So, for example, when we're eating, let's say you're eating some mashed potatoes on a plate. Well, you're going to get a fork, right, or a spoon, or a utensil, a tool, right, to eat that, right, or a knife to cut the steak, or whatever, right, tools, hammers to hammer nails, pliers to twist wire, or cut wire, uh, you know, a tool that I bought for crimping and making network connections, and, you know, RJ45, RJ11 connections, RJ12, etc. These are all tools for a specific purpose. Well, Guess what, body of Christ? You, as a brother or sister of God, are a tool in the hands of God for a specific purpose. In other words, the graces, the anointings, the selections, the callings, the graces on your life that God has trained you up in and raised you up in, in His way, His Word, right? Which is His will to bring you into His work, right? The things that God has brought you up into, those are, you are now that tool of the Lord to be utilized by the Lord in the kingdom of God. To push back the darkness, amen. To bring life and healing. To bring deliverance. To bring revelation. To bring wisdom. To bring knowledge. Amen. Out of your spirit, man. For as many as are of the spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Sons of God is the word we are. Fully matured sons. Jesus was a fully matured son. He's the pattern. He's our example. Right? He was ready when he was 30. And he brought and ripped up the kingdom of darkness everywhere he went. Not as a priest, but as a king having dominion. Right? And he served the people as a priest. But he wasn't a priest yet until he stepped into that ministry when he offered the blood and sanctified. Everything and all the perversion that had happened in, in the heavens with Satan, as he fell, Jesus said, I beheld Satan fall like lightning. Everything now is cleansed by that blood, amen. And we now have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ, amen. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You must maintain righteousness consciousness. You have to believe that. God is not mad at the world anymore. And it's you and me that are ambassadors for Jesus Christ. Amen. 2 Corinthians 5. 17. Woo. Man. Praise God. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, 
who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and hath given unto us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the cosmos, the people in the cosmos, unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word, the Logos of reconciliation. See, we have the words of life. The scripture says, Jesus said in John, uh, Matthew chapter 5, right, in the Beatitudes, Blessed are the peacemakers, for these are the weos of God, the sons of God. That son of God or that daughter of God is walking in maturity, and they know how to bring reconciliation to the world. And get everything restored back to the Father, and bring back the bring back through the dominion of Jesus Christ in our lives, and the strength of God in our lives, and push back the darkness, push back all the infirmity, the sickness, the disease, the poverty, the ignorance, the stupidity, right? And bring deliverance to those that are bound up with drugs, those that are bound up in the works of the flesh, malakos, weak spirits, spirits that bring weakness. Spirits that are hatred, Chemosh and Molech and all these demonic powers, right? Pushing back all the plagues, all the diabetes, all the cancer, all the muscular dystrophy, all these diseases, right? The scripture says in Revelation, his name has power over plague. Well, what is the name that is the God of the Jehovah Heleth? Jehovah Rapha, I am the Lord that heals you. If you come under my authority, if you submit to my will, submit therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. But you've got to stay constant in the word, right? Constant. That's what the Son of God does. The so fully mature son is constant. He doesn't care what the circumstance is. He's going to go back to the word. As the scripture says, men ought always to pray in Luke 18, 1. Okay? That's the spiritual man. That's how the spirit man lives. And let me tell you something. If you think you can walk in spirituals and be carnal in your life, full of mixtures and overtones, and I'm going to get into that in a second, what I'm trying to get at here. <laughs> if you think you can walk in spirituals and things of God, you're sorely mistaken if you're involved in the carnal realm, if you're involved in your own selfishness. You see, you're in, you're out. You're lukewarm, right? You don't want to submit to the will of God. As the scripture says in Psalms, was it 118? Excuse me a second. Let me look this one up. Praise God. I thank you for your word, Father. I thank you for the precious spirit of God, the anointing of God right now. Psalm 118, verse 22. Take a look at that. So you don't want to submit to the rock. You don't want to submit to the order of God. You don't want to do it the way of God because all you know is the way of Babylon which means confusion by mixture. It's all mixed seed. You know, one of the reasons, before I read the scripture of Psalms, that God gave us the sign of the circumcision, which was, I mean, the sign of the covenant, which is circumcision, which is cut off the foreskin, right? It's so that when the seed comes forth, the male, the progenitor, the one who can generate seed and bring forth life after his kind, his wife, his the husband and the wife, after their kind, the seed is in itself to bring forth after its kind. When that foreskin was cut off, it was a sign that when the seed comes forth, the sperma of God, amen, when the seed comes forth, it's no flesh is touching it when it comes out. It's all pure, praise God. And that's what we're trying to get to as sons and daughters of God, to minister these words of life in purity, glory to God. God hates mixture. Over and over in his word, he taught us about this. Don't let your sons marry their daughters. Don't let your daughters marry their sons. Don't make any contracts with them. Don't get involved with them. Right? The world. Don't get involved in their ways. Don't get involved in their Malacos ways. Don't get involved in all this if, uh, uh, ERA stuff. Don't get involved with all these things. Don't allow this mixture to come in and now negate or sterilize the life of God. Because the power is in the seed, the word. The seed of God, when it comes forth, that's where the power is to bring forth and regenerate Christ in us, the hope of glory. Okay? Now, Psalm 118. Hmm. Okay. 
Verse 21. I will praise thee for thou hast heard me and are become my salvation. The way that I'm getting ready to show you, says God. The stone which the builders refused is become the head of the corner. Have you ever constructed something or built something and you've got a piece that doesn't quite measure up to what you're trying to bring forth and bring together and you just pitch it aside? Well, that's exactly what they did to Jesus Christ. When Jesus Christ showed up on the earth, they just discarded him. Matter of fact, they murdered him. They killed him. We don't need this, man. You're disrupting our, you're disrupting our way. We, the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the religious rulers and the scribes and the doctors and lawyers, we've got it all under control, Jesus. We don't need you coming in here and disrupting everything. Flipping over the tables, right? The zeal of thine house, they remembered, of Jesus, has eaten me up. It's tearing me up, amen, to see my people destroyed for lack of knowledge. They can't make a distinction. Nobody's teaching the people a distinction on a wide scale. Nobody's teaching them how to grow up and how to mature. No one wants to bring them up. Nobody wants to raise my sons and my daughters, says God. The stone which the builders refused to become the head of the stone of the corner. This is the Lord's doing it. It's marvelous in our eyes. This is the day which the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This day that they rejected the stone, amen, that day was the day God created. Because he knew, amen, he knew that they would never be able to fulfill it in their carnal, in their flesh. Right? Even so, we can't either, body of Christ. We've got to hear it and see it and understand and comprehend it all after the Spirit. We've got to walk after the Spirit, live after the Spirit. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another. Don't be comparing yourselves among yourselves. Understand your measure of rule. Understand your metron. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Gosh, man. Mm. Verse 12. For we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves. Good job, good job. But they measure themselves by themselves and comparing themselves amongst themselves are not wise. Don't compare yourselves with this world. Don't look at all this imagery and all these celebrities and all these famous people and all the clothes they wear, the shoes they wear, the pants, the dresses, the shoes, all this stuff. All we're doing is becoming like them every time we buy their things and what they're sponsoring and what they're pushing and promoting. It's called the law of sameness. We're just becoming like everybody else and there's no uniqueness. But let me tell you something. You are unique, amen. You are, you, you are a tool of God, amen. You are a utensil of the Lord. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Okay, the weapons is hoplon, utensil, tool of our warfare. Stratomae, strategy, right? You see it right here. It's all, it's all the strategy of God. It's the way of God to bring the people out and to bring them and deliver them. Verse 13, but we will not boast, okay, or vaunt ourselves or throw ourselves beyond of things without our measure, without our amatros. We're, only, we're not going to boast out of our measure. Amatros means immoderate or excessive. We understand our boundaries, Paul said. All right? So we will not boast of things without our measure, but according to the measure, the metron of the rule of the canon. The metron of the canon is the word of God. The canon is the word of God. That's the measure, the ruler that we measure up against. And we size and measure against that. Not the world. Not their opinions and their views, right? A man's confession is a result of his thinking. A man's thinking is a result of his knowledge. A man's knowledge is a result of his source. And there's only two, God or the devil. Amen? And God's source is coming from the tree of life. The enemy in the world and their source is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That's why the body of Christ thinks they have to be involved in all these 101, 201, 301, 401, going through all these courses to fit into their system. Let me tell you something, body of Christ. Jesus Christ didn't go to college. Amen? He, but he was a word, man. We know that, glory to God. Right? And let me tell you something, these apostles, some of them didn't have educations. 
The scripture says, where did they get these scriptures? Where did they get this knowledge? How are they able to see it after the Spirit? How come it has life on it? Why are we bewildered? Why are we astonished? Because they're moving by the life of God. They're moving by the Spirit of God. John 1, 4, in him was life, Zoe. They're moving by the life and the relationship that they have with the Father, glory to God. And even so, body Christ, me and you, we move by the Spirit. We move by the law of life. Praise God. You understand? We move by that life, that word, and the Spirit, working in our spirits, glory to God. God recalling that word by your spirit, and you remember something. You remember an individual. You remember a person. You start praying for them. You start interceding for them. You start warfaring on their behalf. And then you glorify God, amen, because you know that you have your words are faith toward God. And you know, glory to God, God will honor His word. For without faith, it's impossible to please Him. You see? A measure to a, a measure to the measure of the rule, the canon, the metron. Metron means my boundaries. Well, in other words, my anointings, my callings, my selections, my graces in my life, the gifts of God in my life, the talents, the abilities, the strength of God, amen, in me. That's my metron. You have a metron. You have a boundary. You have something that's been distributed to you. It's called the law of distribution. But you're not going to get distributed to if you're carnal. You must stay in the spirit. You must be constant, right? And as the Paul says, which God has distributed to us a measure to reach even unto you. See, when you're in your metron, you have the ability to be, to have the law of distribution. You can distribute what's yours. Praise God. My goodness. Let's look at another scripture. James chapter 1. Mm. Verse 2. My brother, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Right? Knowing this, that the trying of our faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing, or coming behind nothing concerning the kingdom of God, concerning your inheritance. And he goes on to say, if any of you lack of wisdom, ask God. If you need direction from God, ask Him. Amen? In Jesus' name. Jesus said He'll give it to you. Now, back to verse 2. My brother, count on Job when you fall into diverse temptations. There's two ways that you enter into temptation. One is you fall. Fall means you didn't see it. All right? The other one is you enter. Enter means you knew it. You knew the sin. You knew what you were about to get into. You're meeting with somebody. You're a man and you're meeting a woman that's not your wife. You're a woman and you're meeting a man that's not your husband. You know what you're getting into. You see it. And let me tell you something. It's hard to recover yourself after that. Because you're going to take a big loss, amen. Mm. You see, because the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, the product of that tree is death. In other words, life becomes difficult. You keep hitting a brick wall. You don't understand why there's resistance. You don't understand because the scripture says that God gives grace to the humble, but resists the proud. Amen? So it says, my brother count out Joel when he fallen into diverse temptations. Matthew 26 is where we see, watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. Enter and fall. Verse 3, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. This word is patience is the word hupomene, which means constancy. Faithfulness, fidelity, reliability. You see, you're trustworthy constantly. You're always able to be counted on. God can come to you at any moment. Son, I need you. I've got to work for you. You quicken by you get quickened by the Spirit. Manifestation of the Spirit. You get revealed light. Amen. When He, the Spirit of Truth, has come, He will guide you into all truth. He allows you to see something because He needs you to do something for Him. He needs you to say something. He needs you to give a word of prophecy. He needs you to give you a tongue, interpretation tongue. He needs, he's giving you wisdom so that you can bring wisdom. He's bringing you knowledge, a word of knowledge, a word of wisdom. You see? Constantine, amen. 
And Luke 21, 19 says, In your patience possess ye your souls. You've got to maintain constancy, maintain constancy over the soul. And the way you do it is by consistently staying in the word. By consist consistently, no matter what the circumstance or the situation in your family, in your loved ones, in your brothers and sisters is, you don't lose your place in the Lord because you're on the rock. You're standing on Jesus, right? And when the floods comes and floods come and the rains come, it doesn't bother you. Mm. Mm. And it says, knowing this at the trial of your faith worketh constancy. You see, what do we know? Why is there such a joy there? Because we know that God's going to make a way of escape. We know this. And the trying of your faith only makes us more refined, more pure gold, more refined element. Amen. To be able to be sensitive to the Lord and in in your spirit. Man. Actually, it's verse 14. I write not these things to shame you, but as my beloved sons, I warn you. Warn is pathetic. Confrontation, man. I warn you, sons of God. Nutatio. It means to be admonished, to warn, to exhort. Let me tell you something. That's a tough ministry, praise God. It's a warfare. You see, contending with carnal inclinations, 2 Corinthians 10 4, the weapons, the hoplon of our warfare, strategi, right? On our carnal, but mighty for God, to the pulling down of strongholds. You got to take those ideas and those thoughts processes that are not of God and rip them down. That is the warfare of God. That's the campaign, the military campaign that we're on as sons of God, daughters of God. We're doing the work of God of bringing, rec bringing reconciliation back to God. Recovery, in other words. We're in the recovery ministry. Bringing it back for the Lord. Bringing the sons and daughters back to Zion. Glory to God. Verse 15. For though you have 10,000 instructors, and yet have you not many fathers, for in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel. See, the problem with the Corinthians here, they didn't know who their spiritual father was. They didn't understand their, what, what the covering meant. They didn't understand who Paul was to them. And earlier we see in 1 Corinthians 3 that some were saying I'm of Apollo, some of some uh, Cephas, or, or uh, you know, somebody else. See, the issue was they didn't understand spiritual authority here. So God, God had to bring Paul again and correct him again. And they didn't understand. It's not a matter of Father, Father, I'm calling all these brothers that are, that are giving me uh, the seal of significance in my life. Father, Father, it's not a worldly thing, right? It's a spiritual thing. It's something you acknowledge in the spirit. You can't acknowledge the Lordship of Jesus Christ without the work of the Holy Ghost. And even so, we cannot come out of Babylon without that work of the Holy Ghost. Because in Babylon, it's fathers and sons. In, I'm sorry, in Babylon, it's ministers ministering and managing on behalf of that organization. But in the kingdom of God, it's sons and daughters and fathers and part of the life of God, getting you to understand who you are in the Lord so that you can function. You can't do that in Babylon. It's only those that go through their particular courses and stuff that are recognized and ordained as a gift. You don't ordain a gift, you ordain elders in the kingdom of God. But again, there's a whole mixture and confusion and a lack of understanding there, right? My people perish with lack of knowledge. Hosea 4, 6. So it says, though you have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet have you not many fathers? For even Christ Jesus I have begotten for the gospel. In other words, I'm the one that trained you. I'm the one that warned you. I'm the one that nourished you. I'm the one that corrected you. I'm the one that helped you understand the kingdom of God. I'm the one that brought you up and matured you in the things of God, body of Christ. Is what he was saying to them. And where are the fathers, right? Where are those that are training sons? They're far and few. Amen. Matter of fact, I only know two myself. Man, so. Hmm. So, well, let me set it back up. Three. <laughs> All right. You know, I want to read a little story to y'all. And first, uh, let's see here. This is going to be in. I'm just going to brief it to you, but I'm going to read a little bit of it. In Isaiah chapter 38, right? Hezekiah. And this is the word of the Lord right now to the body. Set your house in order. 
The scripture says, Isaiah 38 verse 1, that in those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. And Isaiah the prophet, glory to God, God sent him a prophet, the son of Amos, came unto him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. In other words, you better start getting things right right now. Because you're about to be, you're about to die. You're going to be extinguished. You're going to be no more. Then Hezekiah turned his face toward the wall and prayed unto the Lord. And if you look at the other couple of references in Second Chronicles about Hezekiah, man, he prayed to God. He got his heart right. He met Anoah. All right? He wasn't resistant to God, which is the other word for repentance, metamalomai, eh? which is you turn because you got caught. And said, Remember now, O Lord, verse 3, I beseech thee how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. Man, he heard the word of God, amen. He heard the spirit of God and he repented. Then came the word of the Lord unto Isaiah, Isaiah, saying, Go and say to Hezekiah, Thus saith the Lord. And then when you read it in the king's reference, it says that it's when he was in the middle court, the word of the Lord came to him again, and he had to turn around and come back. And he now gave him this word. Go and say unto Hezekiah, Thus saith the Lord, thy, the God of David, thy father, I have heard thy prayer, I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will add unto thy days fifteen years. Praise God. God extended his life, amen. And I will deliver thee and this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria, and I will defend the city. The word defend means I'm going to defend, to cover, to surround. I'm going to hedge about. I'm going to cover you again, in other words. You see? In the spirit. And that's who God is to us, amen. He that dwelleth, Psalm 91, Psalm 91, 1, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. You're covered, you're protected. Amen, it's the way of the Lord. Angels of God surround you, man, because you're submitted to God's word, his will. And I will deliver thee from the hand of the, from the, hand of the king of Syria. So in other words, they were getting, be, getting ready to be overtaken. And this shall be a sign unto thee from the Lord that the Lord will do this thing that thou hast spoken. And the thing that he spoke, he says, what, what do you want to happen here? Do you, as a sign, God's going to give you the sign. We either shift the shadow up by 10 degrees or shift the shadow back. In other words, move time forward or backwards. That's pretty awesome. And Hezekiah chose, it should be pretty easy to go forward. Let's go backwards. Wow. The writing of Hezekiah, king of Judah, when he had been sick, was recovered of his sickness. So the, the, so the shadow went back 10 degrees. And so he goes on to talk about, uh, in the next chapter, verse 39, verse 1, chapter 39, Isaiah. At that time, Merodach Baladan, the son of Baladan, king of Babylon sent letters and, and a present to Hezekiah for he had heard that he had been sick and was recovered. So this guy was the king of Babylon. Babylon here is a Hebrew word here. It means, it's the word Babel, B-A-B-E-L and it means confusion by mixing. If you remember the Tower of Babel, right? It was all confusion there, man. They were trying to get to God by coming from down below ascending rather than God Christianity is God came down to us Lord of God now <clears throat> and Hezekiah was glad of them and showed them the house of his precious things I want to paraphrase this a little bit he showed them all the treasures of his house and later on we know what happened is they got overtaken and Babylon took everything all the treasures in verse 3, Then came Isaiah the prophet unto the king, Hezekiah, and said unto him, What said these men? And from whence came they unto thee? And Hezekiah said, They are come from a far country, even unto me, even from Babylon. Then said he, What have they seen in thine house? What did you show them? And Hezekiah answered, All that is in mine house have they seen. There is nothing among my treasures that I have not showed them. And Hezekiah had a mask. Great wealth, man. A lot of countries, I mean, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of battles were won under his, 
lordship, under his kingship. Then said Isaiah unto Hezekiah, Hear the word of the Lord of hosts. Behold, the day is come that all that is in thine house and all that which thy fathers have laid up in store unto this day shall be carried to Babylon. Nothing shall be left, saith the Lord. And of thy sons that shall issue from thee which thou shalt beget, shall they take away, and they shall be eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. You see, God took all, I mean, Babylon took all the treasures, took his sons, castrated them, made them eunuchs. Well, they no longer had the power to produce. And so, in the spirit realm, it's the same thing with Babylon today. Babylon takes our sons and our daughters, they take all their treasures, they take all their skills and their abilities, and they weaken them and castrate them in the spirit. In other words, and they cannot bring the life of God to bring forth the distribution of God in them, right? They can't do it because they're carnal. The flesh is touching the spirit when it comes out with the truth of the word of God and the life of God and the light of God, the life of God. It's the same thing, man. And that's why God is so intent on the body of Christ coming out of Babylon. And next next session we'll do, we'll cover that in Revelation and the mystery of iniquity and whatnot. But the point here is, is that Babylon is set up to take your strength. And you can't grow up and come to a place of maturity in Babylon. Right? It's because she's got to feed all these missions, all these ministries. I need this, I need that, Let's, and we need to raise up for this and for that. Constantly taken from the people. You see? But yet the people are not growing up, they're not maturing as sons of God and daughters of God because they're not in the kingdom of God, they're in the Babylonian system. And it's designed to take your treasures. It's designed to make you a eunuch where you can't produce the life of God. All right, Woo. we're going to leave that alone now. And I want to go ahead and get into our outline here. Let me post that up for y'all. If you have any questions, please make sure and post in the comments. Don't be intimidated, man. Ask me questions, praise God. So we're going to get into the outline. All right, hang tight, please. Well, again, we're going to get into the outline. And... The outline today is called Two Ways to Make Intercession. All right. So we're going to talk about two ways to make intercession. And we're going to start with 1 Corinthians 14, 14 through 15. Okay. 1 Corinthians 14, 14 through 15. And I sure want to encourage you, buddy, Christ. Um, if you... If you haven't been baptized in the Holy Ghost, I encourage you to seek God and understand what that means. Um, but for now, we're going to read the scriptures. Amen. 1 Corinthians 14, 14 through 15. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. You see? My understanding is unfruitful. Hmm. What is it then? I will pray with the Spirit and I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the Spirit and I will sing with the understanding also. So there's praying in the Spirit and and then there's singing in the Spirit here. And he says, in other words, I'm going to pray both ways. I'm going to pray in the Spirit and I'm going to pray with my mind, my know, my understanding. All right? So that's important to understand as a son or daughter of God because either these are the ways of God. These are the tools that God has given us, some of the tools. For us to be able to comprehend and see what's going on in the spirit realm. Alright? So, let's go to the next verse here. When you pray in your in your mind, in other words, your comprehension, you understand what you're saying. You pray and when you, when you know the situation, you can pray, right? According to your mind. Pray specific script, scriptures about specific situations to get specific results. As you grow in prayer, let the Holy Ghost quicken you to the scriptures to pray in a situation. And that, that's part of the normal Christian life is that you get quickened in your spirit. You get a reminder of understanding of someone. And all of a sudden, you offer up the word of the Lord for them. You pray for them. 
When you pray in tongues, you pray in tongues when you do not know the situation. Romans chapter 8, verse 26. Romans 8, 26. And likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. Right? But the Spirit itself maketh intercessions for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So that second part there, he that searcheth the hearts. So in other words, when you're praying in the Spirit, the Scripture says it's called searching the hearts. You're, you're scanning, if you will. Okay? And now, because when you search the heart and God begins to bring understanding, now you understand what is the mind of the Spirit. We can have this because the Scripture says that we know the mind of Christ. We know what God is trying to do in this situation for these individuals, for these people, for this matter. You see? Because He makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. This is how the Word of God, one of the ways that God operates within us. All right. So it says there again in Jude one twenty, Jude one twenty through twenty three. Look at that real quick. Jude chapter one verse twenty. But ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. When you pray the Holy Ghost, you build up in your faith. Why is that important? Because the faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. In other words, you get quickened in the word and the spirit as you're praying. In tongues. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal soul. See, when you're praying in the Spirit, you're looking, you're searching, you're trying to understand where the Lord wants to have compassion on what individual. You're praying and asking God for mercy and grace for these people, right? And then he says in verse 22 of some having compassion making a difference. When you're involved with people, right, you're extending the love of God to them, amen? You're ex ex extending the compassion of God. And then others, it says, saying with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. It's a warfare, man. It's a constant battle dealing with brothers and sisters, but dealing with those that are loved ones that are not saved, etc., that are not in the kingdom of God, right? It's a constant warfare. It's a constant pulling out of those perverted seeds and planting the seed of God, the word of God, the sperm of God, into their lives to produce Christ. It's a warfare, man. It's a military campaign. It's contending with carnal inclinations. That's what the word stratomae, stratei, which is where we get strategy. That's where this comes from. That's what it means. Mm. And see, the thing about our spirit, the scripture says, right? Proverbs 18, 14. Praise God. The spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity, but a wounded spirit who can bear it. I remember a situation where I had a surgery, and I had a, a surgery, and it was a replacement of my knee. And, you know, I've got this big old scar on my leg, right? And in that time, I remember praying the word, I mean, and, and I remember this scripture because it sustained me. It kept me maintained and lifted up and constant in the word of God. Praying the word of God over the matter. Laying hands on my knee in Jesus' name. Extending the life of God in Jesus' name. Romans 8, 2. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. I would constantly pray these scriptures. Amen. Pray the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord is life unto those who find them and help to all their flesh. Those were my meat and my drink, amen. Those are the things that I constantly prayed, amen. And by the grace of God, I was able to recover quickly, amen, and get back on my feet, praise God. But it was tough, amen. It was a tough battle. I'm not going to tell you what. The point is, is that my spirit sustained me. And because of the word of the Lord in our lives, that the spirit of God is able to quicken and light on, not because you have all this knowledge and be remembering all these things, because he... Even when you're recalling things that you remember, it still has to be quickened by the Spirit. It's got to come forth and be led of the Spirit. It's got to be directed by the Spirit. God is a mind that's being creative, 
He wants the creativity to come forth from your spirit, not because you have the knowledge of knowing what to do, but because you're seeking God. God, can I move in this area and bring this forth? Can I do this? You see, you're checking in with your Father. You're checking in with your spirit. Right? Proverbs 15, 13. And merry heart maketh good like a medicine, glory to God. And merry heart maketh a cheerful countenance. But by sorrow of the heart, a spirit is broken. Same thing, man. If you allow yourself to be taken down from all the circumstances and situations, and I'm not saying that the people that have went through tough situations, right? You know, rape and experience somebody got murdered in your lives or your son or daughter died or something, you know, you understand? I'm not saying that that's not going to be hard. But again, one of the brothers that I was listening to his, uh, his message on, the, on a radio broadcast on the Periscope, he said that forgiveness, the word forgiveness means to separate from the people. In other words, the offense, right? You release yourself from the person in the offense. And if you don't, then every time you see that person, you remember, you recall. And see, that's not how the uh, forgiveness operates. Forgive and forget, right? In other words, if you want to experience the healing and recovery of God, if you want a quick recovery, if you keep recalling and associating to that individual, you'll never get, you'll be in bondage. You won't get delivered. Hmm. Proverbs 17, 22. And Mary Hart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit dryeth the bones. The same thing, man. If your spirit, man, if you allow your spirit, man, to get bothered down because you can't see and you can't see after the spirit, you can't hear after the spirit because your spirit, man, is so bogged down from all the sorrowness and all the depression and all the hard pressure, right? Because you haven't maintained constancy over your soul, then it's hard. You start drying up, man. The bones can't produce life in the spirit, right? The joints and marrow are not given life. There's no back and forth of the transmission of the life of God to produce God's life, the presence in one another. You understand? Praise God. Hmm. Don't let your spirit get wounded or you will not be able to take over the side of the soul. That's exactly what I was saying. You will not be able to nourish the bones, the body of Christ. You keep your heart, as the scripture says in Proverbs 4.23, keep your heart with all diligence for out of it flow the issues of life. Your heart is made up of your spirit and your soul. <clears throat> The scripture says in the Psalms, unite my heart to fear your name. If the heart was not ununited, then why would he ask to be united? You see? <clears throat> and so therefore, you have to keep and maintain oversight of the soul. Your, your, your heart, again, is the spirit and the soul. Your soul, man, is in between your body and your spirit. He's the guy sandwiched in between. So you've got to maintain oversight so he doesn't go tilt. And all of a sudden, man, you go, you start going on this road and this noemas and schemes of Satan that keep you from seeing back the light of God to seeing the light of God to come out and recover yourself. Or, or, or God sending you someone else to recover and you won't see it. You stay obstinate. Metanoia, man. You start resisting God. You start questioning the Lord. Why? Why, why, why? Why, God? <clears throat> you don't understand the way of the Lord, right, man, at that moment. Mm. When we don't know what to pray, the Spirit makes intercessions for us, and in the Strongs to intercede in behalf of or to make intercession for. That's why when the Holy Ghost brings someone to you, amen, He gives you, He guides you, He's the Spirit of Truth, He, he brings someone to your remembrance, you need to start praying for that person or for that family. Because the warfare is real. We're dealing, we're in a spiritual battle right now. We have been, right? The battle goes on. And it's the enemy pushing back and taking from us our healing, taking up from us our finance, taking from us our peace of mind, 
taken from us the knowledge of God, the wisdom of God, the strength of God. He wants the treasures, man. He wants the life. He wants the inheritance. But guess what? He can't do nothing with it. He's a, he's a liar. And as Jesus said, he was a liar from the beginning. Wow. He can't do nothing with it. Man. He's just living in this loop, man. <clears throat> the scripture says in Luke that, Behold, I give unto you authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the dunamis, the power of the enemy. As we ought. In other words, in the third it says, it, as is necessary, as there's need, as it behooves, as is right and proper. The necessity lying in the nature of the case. In other words, whatever the need is, that's what you pray for. Necessity brought on by circumstances or by the conduct of others towards us. You see, in the kingdom of God, you stay sensitive to God, but in the Babylonian system, you're doing all this work and you're constantly busy, right, about things like Martha, and yet Mary was sitting at the feet of Jesus because one thing is needful, and that's me, Jesus, in your life, my word in your life, my spirit in your life, my father in your life. Wow. Necessity in reference to what is required to attain the end, the result, the goal. There are times that the visible need is only the symptom of the real unseen problem. You've got to see after the Spirit. The Lord has given me the tongue of the learned that I should know how to speak a word and season to him that is weary. See, it takes a lot of wisdom to win the souls of men. Spirits are easy to be won. You must be born again. John 3.16, For God so loved the world. Romans 10.9 and 10, If you believe and confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God will raise him from the dead, you shall be saved. You shall be saved. It's a constant work. <clears throat> but there's a beginning to that, right? And that day that you receive Jesus. So, again, Babylon is trying to take our strength, amen? She keeps us busy. All this dead works. Mm. Help. Take hold together against. You need one another. We need the body of Christ. Infirmities are our inability to produce results. And the answer, tongues and groanings in the Spirit. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Pray. And as God quickens you, recall it. 1 Corinthians 14, 14 in the Amplified. Let's take a look at that. For if I pray in an unknown tongue... My spirit by the Holy Spirit within me prays, but my mind is unproductive. It bears no fruit and helps nobody. Then what am I to do? I, I will pray with my spirit by the Holy Spirit that is within me, but I will also pray intelligently with my mind and understand it. I will sing with my spirit by the Holy Spirit that is within me, but I will sing intelligently with my mind and understanding also. See? Praise God. Amen. All right, <clears throat> Isaiah 28, 11. Now, I put that scripture in there because if you want to get to that place where you're ministering and serving the body of Christ and, you're, and God is utilizing you, well, you're going to have to get involved in the Word of God. You're going to have to study, understand the ways of God. One of the reasons these, these, all these individuals were able to do all these works in the Word of God is because they knew the Word and they had faith toward God and they had the presence of God. And they were, bring, they were able to please God. And they were moving by faith, trusting God in His Word, that he's, what He said He would do, He would do. And they understood the blessing of God, the curse of God. Whatsoever is blessed cannot be cursed, and whatsoever is cursed cannot be blessed. The carnal man and the way that he takes you is the way of the curse. But the spiritual man brings you into the way of the blessing. And what is cursed cannot be blessed. There is no way it's going to be sanctioned by the Lord. Because it's already judged. It's already under this world system. Isaiah 20 11. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to his people. To this people. To whom he said, this is the rest wherewith he may cause the weary to rest. And this is the refreshing, but they would not hear. But the word of the Lord was unto them precept upon precept. Precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little, that they might go, that they might go and fall backward and be broken and be snared. This is the way of God, is for us to be 
dealt with by the Lord. If you're not listening. You see? And then it says here, let me see here. Let me read this one. Verse 9. Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. You want to learn the ways of God, you're going to have to grow up. And stop being a baby. And you're not going to be, you're not going to grow up into maturity in Babylon and Babyland until you come into the kingdom of God and begin to understand the ways of God. Mm. And it takes a real work of the Holy Spirit for a brother or sister to see this and come out of her. It says in Roman Revelation, come out of Babylon. Groaning, the Greek word groaning is to make and stretch the side of murmur to pray inaudibly with grief and groan, to grudge. James 5, 9, right? James 5, 9. Grudge not one against another, brother, lest you be condemned. Behold, the judge standeth before the door, right? So in other words, don't be begrudging towards one another, amen, but groan in the spirit, amen. <laughs> Because nobody can see that. It's a, it's encryptos, man. It's 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 encrypted communication with God. It's in secret. Travail, toil, toil, weary and effort and pain. Jesus travail of his soul. Isaiah 53, 11. And this is again something else that the body of Christ needs to grow up and understand and is that Jesus didn't die in his spirit. He died in his soul. Isaiah 53, 11. He shall see the travail of his soul. And shall be satisfied by his knowledge. Shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. What was the knowledge? He knew that if he died to himself, he was going to be able to break forth the anointing of God and the power of God all over the world out of his spirit. He knew, amen, that keep your heart with all diligence, for it is the issues of life. He knew how to get the life of God out. But he had to grow up first. Isaiah 66, 8 and 9. Who hath heard such a thing? Who has seen such thing? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day, or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. Shall I bring to the birth and not cause to bring forth? Shall the Lord, sh said the Lord, shall I cause to bring forth and shut the womb, said God? No way, man. God is going to bring forth and he's going to raise us up his way. It's called the kingdom of God. It's called fatherhood and sonship. And sonship is the word for adoption. God is adopting us. The spirit of adoption is that we're coming into the Lord, into maturity in the things of God by our Father to be utilized in the work of God. That's the spirit of adoption. That's sonship. That's the way of the Lord. Hmm. Twist and pain to bear to bring forth, man. Just, not, just as it is. Amen. Galatians 4.19, Paul prevailed. I groan, right? My little children, of whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you. Amen. Morpho is the word. Fashion. Metamorpho, right? Morpho, transform, change until the change of God is in you. Until you're constantly manifesting the fruit of God in your life as a son of God. Constantly. Too often conversions are not real births. False labor. Isaiah 26, 16. In sin and disobedience crying. Evil spirits are cast out, right? So in other words, we've got to understand here that the deliverance of God, the work of God to bring us out of Babylon and to bring us out of the world and get us born again, it all is by the Holy Ghost, right? You must comprehend and see it after the Lord. Amen. Because if we don't, if we're seeing it after the carnal man, we're not going to comprehend and understand. We get people born again, we're not even there to raise them up in Babylon. But not so in the kingdom of God, amen. There's fathers, amen, the fatherhood principle all over the place. And there's every, every one of us are able to bring forth and mature and raise up to the level to get these individuals ready for the next level, for the next level, for the next level. From glory to glory, from faith to faith, from grace to grace. Moving us on, growing us up, maturing us. Mark 16, 17, in my name, they shall cast out devils. Amen. 
Revelation 12, 11, by the blood of the Lamb, glory to God. Let's look at that one. And they overcame him, Nikael, overcame his Nike to conquer him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word, the Logos of their testimony. And they love not their suke unto death. They don't mind dying to themselves and serving one another and becoming the servants of God. And if you're a servant of God, then you're a leader of God. You're able to stand forth in some maturity. Matthew 12, 28. Matthew 12, 28. But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come unto you. So even so, body of Christ, if you're hearing these messages, if you're hearing this word even today, and all these thoughts that have nothing to do with God, but are of the world, are coming out, then you need to understand that the kingdom of God is coming unto you. That's the way of God, amen. Well, again, happy Father's Day to all those fathers out there. and I trust that you're understanding and learning the ways of God and not, and. And I trust for the mothers, amen, that they're understanding the ways of God and everybody, the husbands and fathers, mothers are working together, right? Husbands and wives working together in the kingdom of God, bringing forth their sons, raising and training sons and daughters everywhere we go, man. Bring them to maturity. Not being intimidated to step in, man, and bring some alignment, <laughs> realignment. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you, Lord God, for your presence, oh God. I thank you for this powerful word, amen, today. I thank you for those that are partake and those who will partake in the future, Father. I thank you for the Holy Ghost, amen, that's within us without, and that's working without, amen, to bring forth the kingdom of God in the lives of my brothers and sisters and the lives of the world. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name, for your great grace and your mercy today, Father. I love you, Father, and I give you praise, Father, in Jesus' name, amen. Praise God.
Holiness establishes your throne. 